I'm waiting on your notification. Jeez. All right. This should be live now. And make sure you talk into the mic. So we're on camera now, just so you guys know. Um, just look for me. Right. Yep, that's it. There it is. Now first hit share. Where? <laughs> hit share. Yeah. I think you gotta select who you wanna share it with though. No, no just hit okay. share. Yeah. Well what? No, I think he I think don't do an option. We have four viewers. One second, we'll be right with you. You just hit share? Yep. Just hit share now. Yeah, there you go. Is it just with yep. his friends or your friends? His timeline. So he's good to go. So All right. His friends. Yeah, that's fine. My friends uh my friends already have the post that I sent out. So we're on camera now. Great. All right. So make sure you guys talk directly into the mic and we're good to go. Got it. Good evening once again and welcome to yet another exciting episode of Ten Minutes with Ronald. The show that nobody asked for, yet someone is watching. I am here in deep in western northern Virginia. <laughs> Out here in the sticks of Herndon, Herndon, Virginia, Hee Haw Land, as they call it. And I'm here with my friends, Mr. Juan and Jessica Burton. Welcome. How are y'all doing? Hello. Great. Uh, so we're going to talk, we're going to continue talking about parenting. And so you are the parents and step parents of a teenager. Mm -hmm. That's right. So Cameron Burton. Burton. Cameron Burton. I just met her. She seems like a lovely young lady. Uh, so we're going to talk a little bit about that, as well as your relationship uh, with her, how you guys feel about raising her in the current state of the world, um, and everything in between and all that. So uh, make sure you guys speak directly into the mic. Sounds good. So they can hear you. So uh, tell me a little about y'all. How long have you guys been married? How did you guys meet? Oh. Where did you guys go to school? Was it the greatest school in time and space? Indeed the, it was. Oh, okay. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Yes. The Virginia Commonwealth University. The Virginia Commonwealth <laughs> University. Um, so I think we both have a different version of how we met, but basically, long story short, um, I'm a Delta, Juan's a Q, and that's kind of how we met your organizations. Okay. What Delta of who? Q what? Delta Sigma Theta Sorority. Oh, what is that? The Mighty Ada Tau Chapter okay. at VCU. All right. And the Omega Psi Phi Fraternity Incorporated. Uh, Phi Delta Chapter, Virginia Commonwealth University, chartered in March 20th, 1973. Yep. So you're not you're not gonna bark? No, I'm not gonna bark. Okay. Not right now. <laughs> not right now. <laughs> not right now. <laughs> okay, so you guys met at uh, VCU, and how long have you guys been married? Five months. Okay. I mean, how long were you guys dating before you guys got married? Well, that's another. Uh, everyone has a different timeline with that. Um, but we're gonna is, go with who is everyone? Our officiant. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's set the record straight. For so, all seven of my viewers, let's we're, the we're gonna go with. Um, so we actually got married the day before our six-year anniversary. Okay. So we we dated for five years. Okay. Yeah. Almost six. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And how old is Cameron now? Thirteen. So you met her when you she was how old? Four. Okay. And how old were you? Twenty-one. So let let's start with that. So. Yeah. For twenty-one. Yeah. Wow. I just started drinking. Well, oh. legally. Really? Oh. I mean, it doesn't matter. Oh. 22 or something. No, like, oh. no, I was 22 when I graduated. I met Cameron my senior year of college. Okay. Yeah. All right. This is getting good. Um, <laughs> okay, so you met her when she was eight? Four. You said four. Four. So, okay, so, all right. So, and this is where the, the whole dating. So, we met in 2008. We mm -hmm. dated, took some time apart, and we started dating again in 2010. Okay. So, I met Cameron when she was four in 2008. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. Okay. So, uh... Let's talk a little bit about that. So you are dating this wonderful person, mm -hmm. and you find out that he has a child, mm -hmm. and you meet her. So what are your first initial reactions, knowing that you could have a future with him and this child? Um, okay, so being a senior in college, I never really thought, like, oh, I could be a stepmom mm -hmm. with our relationship, just because it was so new. Mm -hmm. um, we would go and visit with Cameron, because uh, she was living in Portsmouth at the time. Um, so we go down and visit with her, and I mean, she was adorable. She's like this cute little four-year-old with like chubby cheeks and a big little round belly. Um, <laughs> and she was just really, I mean, she was... She was in earshot. Right? <laughs> she, she knows. Okay. Um, but Cameron, I mean, from the moment I met her until today, like she's an amazing kid. Mm -hmm. Like she is the 
I wish every other stepmother could get a child like her mm -hmm. because she's just so awesome. She's so kind. She's so loving. She's a great kid. Mm -hmm. And that's just been throughout the time that I've known her. Okay. And so you are the parent of now 13-year-old Cameron. Cameron, well, you guys both are. And forgive me if I ever come off by saying you're the parent, you're the step-parent. I know no, parenting is very fluid, so mm -hmm. I completely understand that. So you had Cameron when she was young. Can you tell us, all, I'm sorry, when you were young. Yeah. <laughs> Can you tell us a little <laughs> bit about that and your experiences with that? Uh, yeah, mm -hmm. um, found out we were having Cameron when I was 19. Mm -hmm. Her mother was also a student at VCU. I started VCU in 2000. Okay. Uh, her mother also. Um, and um, I was actually transferred to Christopher Newport University um, to play football mm -hmm. there at that time. And when we found out, so it was maybe the uh, second week of camp. Mm -hmm. And I found out that uh, my girlfriend at the time was expecting her mother, uh, who carry on as a freshman, I mean not a freshman, but she would have been, um, that would have been her third year at VCU the following year. Mm -hmm. um, so me learning that at that time in my life during a transition, it was something, you mm -hmm. know, um, but it, it, it's what comes with the territory, you mm -hmm. know, you, so um, knowing that my life was going to change forever, mm -hmm. that's what I knew. I knew that my life was going to change and I knew that I had to uh, be more responsible, I had to be more accountable. And I had to go about what I thought were going to be the next two or three years of fun just playing Division three college football and doing that type of thing. I knew that was going to change right away. Mm -hmm. um, and that was that was the immediate feeling I knew right away. I knew that life was going to change forever at that point. Mm -hmm. So do you feel like, uh, talk a little bit about your experiences with uh, having a child and dating. Because, um, and I know, and we'll get to more parenting, but I know that especially amongst black men and black women as well, uh, the stigma of having children out of wedlock and the stigma of having children young seems to be pretty heavy and perpetuated more by the media. So how did you deal with that, especially when it came to your dating life um, moving forward? Well, the one thing that when um, when I was in college and you know getting into my professional life, I, my, my professional career started in Fredericksburg, Virginia. Mm -hmm. Um, and Cameron at that time was living in Chesapeake, Virginia with her mother as she's done up until recently. Um, so when I knew when it came to me dating, I had to be selective of who I brought around Cameron, meaning if I were uh, dating someone when Cameron would visit me where I was living, I would make sure I was you know cautious about who I exposed her to. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's something I learned from you know my parents. Mm -hmm. uh, that they didn't expose me. You know, I was raised in a, a split parent household as well, mm -hmm. so I understood how important it was to make sure that I exposed her to people who I knew were going to have longevity in our life, so that she didn't get used to the high turnover or transition or other things that are perpetuated by media. That there are people in and out of the house, in, in and out of relationships. I wanted to show her some stability. Um, so that's how dating was for me with regards to her. Now. Would you like to know more about how it was to, to date women knowing that I had a child and when they would ask? Absolutely. Okay, if that's where you want to go. Um, it, it's not, it wasn't hard. I was mm -hmm. never in a, a position where I felt as women were not willing to be involved with me for having a child mm -hmm. because of, of what I felt the role I played in my child's life. If, mm -hmm. if I were to feel I would be a totally absentee parent, mm -hmm. I would hope that women would want nothing to do with me. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, but I didn't have that experience because that wasn't my relationship with my daughter. Okay. Yeah. So very good. So now she is uh, 13 years old, and you mm -hmm. guys have your hands full of a teenaged girl in today's society. So what are your initial reflections thinking about you guys ra raising a teenage girl today in 2016? Any initial things come to mind? What are the first things you guys think? It's scary. Like, it's really scary. And it, I think... Um, I have that perspective because of my job. Mm -hmm. So I work in Child Protective Services and I deal with a lot of cases that involve, um, well, all of my cases are children that have been abused and neglected and I come across a lot of cases where it's kids that are Cameron's age that are victims of some type of abuse and seeing such a small percentage of the world's population in such a horrific situation it's hard not to come home being like, oh gosh, I never want Cameron to be exposed to that, I want to make sure that she's informed, like internet safety is something that Cameron and I talk about all the time just mm -hmm. because it's a fear that I have that she'll fall victim to something because I see that these kids have no idea of mm -hmm. how their actions and what they do and how they put it online and you can never take it back. Mm -hmm. It's it's 
less scary because I have her. <laughs> and if I didn't have her to make sure the camera could see those things from the female perspective, I'm confident she would get it from her mother. Mm -hmm. However, when she's here with us, I rely on her when it comes to those things. Um, and I understand that my space is to model the best behavior for her. But raising a teenage daughter, I understand that there are going to be some times when she's exposed to some just some young child running wild stuff. So I don't I don't get afraid as much as I would if I didn't have her. What I am uh, worried about is her being what we call in my household growing up is fast. I, I felt it coming uh, as you yeah. as you started building up. I was like, he's about to say fast. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I hear it coming already. I do not know <laughs> the professional term for mm -hmm. fast mm -hmm. um, because fast takes on a lot of different things. Mm -hmm. uh, fast goes into your presentation. Mm -hmm. Fast goes into your self esteem. Mm -hmm. Fast goes in how you interact with others. Fast goes into the way you talk. Absolutely. Uh, fast goes into your interests. Mm -hmm. You know, the things you like, music, television yeah. shows. Um, so I'm lucky that I don't have a fast daughter. I'm okay. extremely blessed that I don't have a fast daughter. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm, I go to bed every night thankful that my daughter is not yeah. fast. <laughs> <laughs> for, the, for my listeners that need to know or my viewers that need to know more about what fast means just interview me i mean uh inbox me and i'll give you more details on that we could do a whole we could do on a fast. whole yeah just on what fast is yeah. but it's very it's a very black community like it's something that we say mm -hmm. you know i only heard my mom saying it growing up but mm -hmm. my mom people at church other black folks mm -hmm. say it but you don't ever hear like I never hear like many white folks say fast. You know what I mean? Right. They're like way meaner. They'll be, oh, she's a slut. They like yeah. like yeah. go into it. You know? yeah, like, yeah. But my mom was like, you. My mom would always say to my daughter, you can't be out there hanging out with them old fast women. I'm like, <laughs> what does that mean? Did they run? Like as a kid, I was like, what are they running? Yeah. Like what? What are you talking about? Them girls fast. My mom hates speed fast. for some reason. Yeah, you need to slow down, Mel. <laughs> okay. So uh, have you guys noticed any marked changes between the time that she was? Uh, uh, like maybe let's say 10 or 11 to now is there anything where you're like who is this person confidence okay confidence and voice once again keep talking I'm gonna make adjustments okay on the video. yeah sure someone got some 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 feedback or something? I'm checking now um, I'm gonna keep talking yeah confidence keep talking. Uh, confidence and voice my daughter is much more expressive I don't make this one um, oh it's fine all right cool keep going <laughs> Uh, my, my daughter is much more expressive than I was mm -hmm. at 13. Mm -hmm. uh, I was a lot more go with the flow mm -hmm. because that's just what I did. I was raised, you know, primarily by my grandparents and my mother and father, of course. Um, but there wasn't a lot of, you know, conversation where I was expected to lead it. Okay. However, here, mm -hmm. and I know in our family, this dynamic I'm just discussing here, my micro family, Cameron is a contributor mm -hmm. in intellectual mm -hmm. conversation. So she's expected to be up on her stuff you yeah. know, when we play and games, have an opinion yeah she's expected mm -hmm. to have an opinion mm -hmm. she's expected to advocate for herself mm -hmm. um but yeah and she has the confidence and the ability to do that and i'm very thankful uh and i know that I, i'm probably gonna say a, a lot about my wife but she is very 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 you know critical in that because she encourages it, encourages it she reinforces it mm -hmm. but she also understands that you know we, we have to be mindful of those boundaries as well yeah mm -hmm. uh, because once again we go back to being fast you can have a voice you can have confidence but don't be fast okay so that's that's that how um I'll how let, has, I'll, let her, I'll let her go if I, if I didn't take too much of that well how has she responded to you being her stepmother like and and actually, we'll talk a little bit about that and then talk a little bit about how you feel about being a step parent. Okay. Um, so, Cameron, I think it was before we got engaged, but we had moved back up to Virginia. That's when she started telling me, like, oh, I just tell my friends you're my stepmom because it's just easier. And I was like, all right, I mean, that's cool. And I think just in the past, like, four, well, okay, maybe like the past four and a half, five years, it's really been figuring out, like, who am I to Cameron? Mm -hmm. And I think. The harder part was before we got engaged, and more importantly, before we even got married, was figuring out how can Juwan and I co-parent mm -hmm. without me overstepping my bounds because I wasn't, I'm not, I wasn't officially her stepmom. I'm still Juwan's girlfriend, and figuring out how can we work together, and then making sure it's relayed and communicated to her mom. Mm -hmm. 
And so I think a lot of the past couple of years have been really trying to figure out how we work together and then how now the three of us are going to work together. Mm -hmm. um, seeing Cameron grow up, I think kind of going back to the question that you asked before about how do I feel about her being 13, not only with Cameron ha like having the confidence to speak up and to to be engaged with us with conversations, it's also thinking about how is Cameron perceiving like all these new changes. With being 13, she's going to a new school, she just moved to a new area, you know, her dad just got married, um, you know, her mom is re getting ready to get married, so there's a lot of new different dynamics, and also just being 13 on top of that, mm -hmm. in a new place, like trying to figure out what we can do to help best support Cameron, because she's at a, a point in her life where it can go really great, or we can have a really bumpy road. Mm -hmm. So how do you feel like uh, uh, how do you feel like she's related to you now? Is that, have you ever had any friction with her? You being a step parent or how no, has that been? So that's, it's been a smooth thing. transition. Yeah. So Cameron and I, it was never like I don't like Jessica. Like mm -hmm. that's my stepmom. I mean, it wasn't like the movie Stepmom. Mm -hmm. You know, like I'm Julia what Roberts. Movie is that? Huh? What movie is that? Stepmom. Tell me more about it. Okay, so it's about Julia Roberts and what's the other woman's name? Susan Sarandon. Thank you, Susan Sarandon. Mm -hmm. I got it right. Yes, <laughs> killing it. So <laughs> Julia Roberts is the new girl, and she just married Susan Sarandon's old husband. Who was that? Listen, I don't. That, he wasn't a, an essential character. I mean, he really should have been a good co-parenting movie. Would have been he was more involved, but he wasn't. Mm. Um, so a patriarchal movie. Yes. About the roles of women. Yes, mm -hmm. and so it really was. Um, Susan and Julia clashing. Mm -hmm. Like, Julia got... It doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. I'll just keep going. But so, Cameron actually watched that movie because I wanted her to understand that, like, I'm never going to replace your mom. Mm -hmm. I'm never going to try and compete with your mom. Mm -hmm. But I'm here for you, and mm -hmm. I love you, and I want to be a support for you. And that was part of the promise that I made to her during our wedding ceremony mm -hmm. is that, you know, I wasn't there in the beginning, but I'm here now, mm -hmm. and I'll be here forever. So... It's very touching. Thank you. Um, how do you guys feel about disciplining her, especially as a 13-year-old? And again, this is kind of like, because we're both talking about parenting a teenager and being uh -huh. a step-parent, uh -huh. I know this can be kind of like a minefield as far as like, so how do you guys discipline her as a teenager, as a girl, and as a step-parent, mm -hmm. and as a parent, and as co-parenting with your with your uh, your baby, your child's mother, yeah. who is not does not live here? So the last part, we're still trying to figure that all out, and I think this coming year will be a new challenge for us because mm -hmm. now she's literally going to be 30 minutes away from us mm -hmm. versus in the previous years she was three hours away okay so our dynamics as far as co-parenting and then co-parenting with her are going to change drastically because we'll be involved more on a daily basis face to face mm -hmm. um so i think that's a, a challenge that we're about to experience but as far as i blanked on the first part of your question sorry yeah. i just wanted discipline. to hit that last point i asked a lot of stuff discipline okay <laughs> yeah. yeah so sorry Oh, okay. So with, when it comes to discipline, first off, and I'm going to say it again, Cameron is a really great kid. Like, mm -hmm. I've never seen her throw a tantrum. I've never seen her throw anything. She's not like me because mm -hmm. I was terrible. I was really bad. Yeah. Um, well, you weren't there. Okay. Yeah, I know. Right. <laughs> you I'm don't like, know. Yeah, yeah. I you was, don't know my life. I was there. I was no. bad. Um, <laughs> <laughs> she was so fast. <laughs> Whoa. Well, yeah. She needed to slow down. I prefer outspoken. Yeah. <laughs> um, anyway, so as far as disciplining Cameron, the only thing that we do now, because... I don't believe in physical discipline because my job and also it's completely ineffective. Um, but the worst punishment for her is to take away her phone. Like, mm. you would think it's solitary confinement. Mm. Like, you've just taken her away from life. Um, so that's what we do is, like, we'll take away her phone. But also with Cameron and, and the worst that she could, I don't know, I can't remember the last, like, bad thing she did that required some type of, like, discipline. It may just be, like, hey, Cameron, I need to make sure that, like, don't put your wet towel on the mm. leather chair. Like, it's just not a good idea because mm. you're going to ruin it. And that's pretty yeah. much it. First world, first world parenting problem. Yeah, yeah for real. Y'all yeah. doing all right? You take chair. that forty-five minute shower, <laughs> put your wet towel in that leather chair. What is wrong? With the you? hot water ran out, man. I gotta wait like five minutes for it to heat up. I have to take a bubble bath. Right. <laughs> I can't take a shower. But, but no, she she's right. She's not a, a problem child, mm -hmm. and we're extremely blessed with that. Mm -hmm. And you know, her her mother has reinforced that, and our family has always reinforced that. You know, she be mindful and respectful of boundaries. Um, the the most that I have to remind myself to stay on top of are the little slips mm -hmm. when she you know she can slip a boundary every now and again uh, if someone gives her instructions and she doesn't do it right away that's when I'm starting to say okay all right now you now you're pushing it mm -hmm. uh, so you got to tighten up on that so when it comes to discipline um, 
most importantly, it's, a, it's about reinforcing the behavior, but also recognizing, okay, I may have to build you back up after I tear you down, mm. even if it's something. Mm, that uh, sounds like hazing. When it was that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Never. Heard uh, that statute of limitations. <laughs> so going on. <laughs> so, so yeah, hazing. If if in in the event I need to um, bring her back, oh, bring her back um, from a discipline situation, because there are times we gotta. Yeah, literally, but but as I'm sitting here discussing this with you, I'm thinking like all the times there've been like first world banning problems. Yeah. I remember mm -hmm. there was a time where she kind of ran ran amok when we were putting up the Christmas tree or something like that, and I'm like, hey, look, go upstairs. <laughs> but then You're I think, Christmas. But I'm like, yeah, you put up a Christmas tree. Like, yeah. what are we really talking about here? It's not really right. these issues, and we're very thankful of that. Mm -hmm. So we hope that doesn't make a sharp U-turn anytime mm -hmm. soon, where we right. have to start enforcing some of that. But back to the discipline. It's all about. Hey, look, this is where we went wrong. I need you to correct this, and this is why. Mm -hmm. uh, because this is important for you to understand that moving forward. I'm just not coming on down hard on you, or mm -hmm. Jessica's not just coming down hard on you. It's because you need to get this lesson. Mm -hmm. uh, because you're going to need this moving forward. So this, it's all about layering it the right way. Mm -hmm. uh, discipline, reinforcement, and, you know, rebuilding that self-esteem a little bit. And if there needs to be some form of discipline, like, Juwan and I are going to have a conversation before he does something or before I do something like mm -hmm. we're gonna make sure we're on the same page because what we see with being um, a d dad and a stepmom and then her living with her mom is that sometimes it's trying to pin us against one another mm -hmm. and yeah. it's, it's innocent yeah. it's not like blatantly intentional mm -hmm. like or extremely man manipulative but it's making sure that he and I are on the same page so that she can't go to him and say yeah. something and tell me something different. Like she knows that if she's gonna tell him, I'm, I'm gonna know it mm -hmm. and we're on the same page with what's going on. Do you guys ever do the thing where, and I encourage you to if you don't, where you just default to what the other said? Even if you didn't hear them, you have to like blindly default? Do we do that? I don't think so. so. I think there's always a conversation. So I say that because uh, me and my sister used to do, we tried that maybe once or twice with our parents before they got hit. <laughs> and then my dad, my dad like started defaulting hard. I don't know if him and my mom had a conversation, yeah. but we'd be like, dad, I asked your mom. <laughs> oh, you ever, oh, all right. You watch, do you watch Everybody Hates Chris? I, I watch a little bit of it. My there's, sister's a bigger fan than I am. There's an episode where that happens. Oh, yeah? Where they turn, you know, the parents against each other. And yeah. the episode ends with the father saying, I don't know, ask your mama. That's, yeah. how, that's how that ends. And I'm pretty sure it's going to get to that one day. Yeah. You know, the more our family grows, yeah. and the less attention that one of us has. Mm -hmm. and, uh, when there's more people to try and manipulate the situation, I'm pretty mm -hmm. sure it'll come to that. And it'll probably be, yeah, do what your mom said. Um, <laughs> happy wife, so happy life. That's a safe way to go. Yeah. Happy mom. I'm trying to learn that. Be dead. I'm trying right. to learn that. Live long I'm trying years. to accept that. Uh, send me tweets to remind me, happy wife, happy life, because I forget, you know? I forget. Oh, Relly says hello. Hey, Relly. Hey. What up, Rel? You weren't at work today. I was trying to message you. Oh. She going to respond? Okay. Stop snitching, Jawan. <laughs> all right, so, <laughs> so, all right, so uh, let, let's uh, let's bring it down a little bit. So um, we're in society where feminism seems to be taking a, a bigger seems to be taking a bigger role in society, as well as issues of race. So you guys are dealing with a black woman uh, mm -hmm. raising a black woman. How do you guys deal with issues of, especially when it comes to equality for women and for black people? in today's society. And think about this against the backdrop of the election as well as the political climates with the issues that's been going on. Yeah, I'm gonna default some of that to you. My daughter is very, very observant. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, she watches the news, she reads books, uh, watches a lot of television, watches movies, so she's very insightful. Um, she's very creative and I think having that type of mind allows her to be open-minded about certain things and it gives her a, a default opinion on certain you know very opinionated when it comes to that I'm blocking my face I'm sorry jeez I'm sorry people um, so when it comes to the when you, and I'll try and break that down when it comes to raising a young black girl it goes back to that confidence um, I want her to understand that she's just as capable as everyone else and um, you know she's encountered racism imagine that in the seventh grade you know up until the seventh grade and eighth grade now she's encountered you know racism she's encountered where she felt something was racially motivated 
Um, you know, her mother and I had to address some, address something at a school that you know in Chesapeake. So, the, you know, my, my daughters had to lose that innocence. Mm-hmm. You know, at a certain age, and I'm pretty sure I lost it at a certain age as well. Maybe even younger than her. But she's, you know, she she has to she she she's learning that she has to be adequate enough to stand alone on her merit. So that means she's got to, you know, get good grades. She's got to perform well if she's going to play basketball. Um, she's got to be able to stand on those things so so then people can understand, okay, yeah, you 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 should be here. You should be in the honors class. You should be in this advanced class. And then once you once you show that you belong, you can then separate the things that could be racially motivated and the things that could be discriminatory. Uh, for and even on a sexist level, mm-hmm. uh, because I'm pretty sure she encounters boys who expect her to be less smart or her to be more passive. Um, but she knows that she belongs when she's in certain places. Um, you know, she she's very outgoing, very confident. Uh, but in this landscape, you talk about society, things happening to black people. We do have those painful conversations, and that's something that I'm pretty sure will get more you know graphic and detailed the older she gets. But she rec- she's able to recognize certain things on the face of how the media can portray it. You know, sh- sometimes I'll hear her say, well, if that was a white person, it wouldn't have happened that way. Or that only happened because they're black. Mm-hmm. Um, and I can't argue with her sometimes in, in the reality of today. However, I do want her, I, I do want her to get in the habit. Uh, I want her to get in the habit, rather, of looking at things from a holistic perspective. Uh, giving people the benefit of the doubt before you judge them. Uh, just like I want you to, you know, have command on your presence and stand out where you are, I want you to also give people uh, the benefit of the doubt as well. Look at what the marriage that they're bringing before you prejudge them. Um, and that's hard to do, you know, in this day and age, honestly. But that's something that we haven't had to encounter too uh, too thoroughly yet. Mm-hmm. But it has come up, you know, it has come up. So just tonight, I don't know, Cam, uh, so Cameron's reading a book called The Pregnancy Project, mm-hmm. and it's about a girl who talks about her entire family who, when uh, these women growing up, they all got pregnant at a really young age. And so I think the book is based on the girl pretends to be pregnant, and she talks about how people treat her differently. And there was a conversation that I guess she was having with my mom and was talking about how this girl, she got married and she got pregnant and she didn't go to school and she ended up just living in the projects and working at McDonald's and Karen kind of made a statement implying like well why didn't she want to do more and my mom who's a very big feminist was like well women can do what they want to do they don't have to do that and Cameron's stance was we've fought hard to get to where we are why shouldn't she be taking advantage of going to school getting a degree getting a better job giving her kids more so it's been interesting to kind of see her kind of evolve as far as you know we've been fighting to have mm. these rights, we should be taking advantage of them. But I think my mom's comment also gave her a lot of perspective that you can still be who you want to be and you can make your own decisions and no one can dictate what you have to do. So so I think a few weeks ago when um, I'd say the worst week of, that I remember in recent history with the shootings and the Dallas shooting and the, uh, uh, the um, Philando Castile and there's so many names I forget but mm-hmm. with all of that that happened I probably had about the worst week of my life I don't know if you saw my post on Facebook I was like going into into yeah. a lot of stuff uh go ahead no no I'm, uh, I'm listening to you okay but my point was um it was really tough for me to talk to anybody about it like it was tough for me to go to work it was tough for me to like talk to especially I work in a primarily white space so it was tough for me for them to understand what was going on um, people like hey I was a weekend how's everything going do you watch the news like it was, <laughs> it was bad like and then I'm, I'm on a tight deadline trying to get this done and I just I don't want to mess with nobody so uh, keeping that in mind and I don't know how emotional you guys got during that time but how do you guys manage parenting while also managing your emotions when it comes to to your daughter um, from from that place you talk about <clears throat> I don't know if you remember. It was like it was like a year ago. We we had an email exchange mm-hmm. even before we were talking about uh, marriage. Mm-hmm. Well, I was I was pretty much going through a similar phase of what you went through most recently. Oh, I, anger. I, yeah, I <laughs> I went through that with uh, Darren Wilson yeah. murdering uh, Mike Brown. Yeah. Around that time, that's when it hit me. I yeah. had the same issues of not being able to go to work. Yeah. You know, just just being a probably a horrible person to be around. Yeah. More recently, with the it's actually in the summer now. Cameron's been up here for a while. Mm-hmm. 
I think it would be different if 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 it was a, a male Cameron. I feel yeah. like the, the conversations mm-hmm. would be a lot different. Mm-hmm. And I don't know if that's wrong. I, that might be a thinking error on my part that I'm not, you know, involving and engaging with her on that level more because I'm thinking about how different things would be because she's a, a woman. But we have examples of things going bad for black women, too, yeah. uh, in the hands of, you know, law enforcement or just in society, period. Um, I would like to hear more of what she feels about that. Mm. I would like to hear more of how I can support her uh, because if I give her my version, it's going to be from the male perspective. It's going to be from the you know the historic perspective of this has been happening to us for years. But if you you look like the OJ documentary has something about a, a black woman getting shot or something like that, right? So it's been going on for years in this yeah. country with black men and black women. So I probably need to become more invested in that with her. Uh, and not waiting and not continually waiting but when you talk about the anger and balancing that with parenting um, luckily I'm not going to say luckily but for her I haven't exposed that part of myself to her Mm -hmm. Um, and like I said before I don't know if that's a thinking error on my part that I haven't Mm -hmm. shown her that raw emotion when it comes to how you know poorly I feel about those things and maybe maybe I should I don't know what do you think I mean, I think the conversations that I've had with Cameron or that Cameron has actually been a part of because it's the way we work as a family is like a lot of our conversations happen around the dinner table. Like that's the moment where we're all home from work and we're talking about our days and we're talking about the news. Um, A lot of the conversation that that we have in front of Cameron is talking about for me, from my standpoint, because Juan's standpoint is definitely very different than mine. um, But it's getting a better understanding of like what happened in those incidents and trying to understand the whole story and realizing that the news is going to portray one thing and another station is going to tell you something else and then you're going to see something different on social media and it's trying to figure out for me i need to piece things together it's very hard for me to just take something at face value and be like yep that's 100 percent true mm-hmm. um and and i say that just in, in the sense of like just in news in general not even pertaining to you know what's been happening um but so that's kind of what my conversations have been with cameron but i agree with juan we really haven't sat down and had like a direct let's talk about all these black men that are being murdered by cops Mm. because I have a lot of friends that are cops because my job has me working with detectives all the time and so how I feel about it is very different than how Juwan feels about it and so I think maybe we haven't had that conversation with her because we haven't really been able to come to a place of like solid agreement on Mm -hmm. either agreeing to disagree or having a mutual understanding and how we want to present it to Cameron. Well that's not give a misrepresentation we know what wrong is mm-hmm. well, yeah. we, we, we know what wrong is so mm-hmm. we agree on what's wrong when when something happens and that's just blatantly wrong mm-hmm. um, but from the perspective of father what's important for Cameron to understand is that these things what I, what I feel is are important for Cameron to understand is that these things have been happening and one, I have to teach her how to cope Yeah, I can't, te- I can't change any stuff I can advocate and make Facebook posts and, and push for change in my job and push for change in the community. Mm-hmm. But what I'm left with is just teaching her a coping mechanism mm-hmm. and whether or not she was, you know, whether it's a group of young men that I'm speaking to or young, older, I don't, it doesn't matter. Mm-hmm. I'm just teaching them how to cope. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so in, in turn is me, me teaching Cameron how to cope. It has to be, okay, well, this is what happened in this situation. I feel that it's wrong, but let me tell you how to handle yourself if you're out at the movies uh, and this happened. Uh, me working in the juvenile justice system and the criminal justice system, I give her pointers on how to handle herself when she's out. Uh, the one thing, and I, if any kids are watching, if you're out with your friends and you notice one of your friends is stealing, what do you do? You stay in the store and you call your dad because you can't steal anything if you're still in the store and you're waiting for your father to come pick you up. That's one thing that I teach her. The next thing is probably clever. Yeah. (laughs) I would have never thought I would be like, run, get out of there, run, run. Pull an empty out of your pockets and stuff. And, and, you know, and I have uh, a a generation of younger uh, male cousins that I probably will have to, you know, talk to about some of this stuff as Mm -hmm. well. But it'll be different for them. But when it comes to Cameron, I'll be more mindful of, okay, well, be, be careful of the situations you subject yourself to. And the best way to do that is to be careful of the people that you associate yourself with. Now, when you're in those situations and you're alone, 
Well, you know, she's 13, so mm -hmm. she's not driving. Yeah. She's not going to work. Yeah. She's not out on her own. So there are certain things that we really haven't had to encounter right. yet. Mm -hmm. uh, so I imagine that when we have this conversation another three years, mm -hmm. three, four years, it'll be totally different. Mm -hmm. um, but, yeah, that's that's where we are now. But, you know, like, I started this by saying I didn't want you or anyone else to think that just mm -hmm. that we don't agree on what's right is what's right, right. what's yeah. wrong is what's right. wrong. And, and, I, and I, yeah. I totally understand that there's, like, a dearth of opinions when it comes mm -hmm. to this. Yeah. I feel like there's... There's two sets of opinions. There's one that's on the far right that I don't agree with, and there's one that's way on the far left that I don't agree with. Right. There's something right in here that we can all agree on mm -hmm. that I think some people are just refusing to right. get. Either one side, one side's refusing to give a little bit, and the other side's refusing to give a little bit. And I think mm -hmm. that's that's a bit of a problem. But I, I do agree. I think for the most part, most of the good people that I've met, and I can let every all the viewers imply whatever you like from that statement. Um, Right is right and wrong is wrong. Mm -hmm. right? I think we can all we can all agree on that. Yes, sir. I, I did want to I will want to make one thing clear that I'm not sheltering her. Mm -hmm. um, one of my favorite poems is Mother's Son by Langston Hughes. Mm -hmm. And when I read that poem, I think about a mother shattering the innocence of her son by telling her son that life is going to be crazy yeah. and tough. Yeah. You cannot sit down and you cannot lay down and you can you cannot stay down once you, you got to get back up and keep going because I had to. Mm -hmm. So those conversations, you know, we, we sort of trickle, you know, trickle them in when we can, mm -hmm. but we haven't had that sit down yet because of, I think of where she is in her life. Mm -hmm. uh, she's, you know, still in middle school. Mm -hmm. um, so a lot of it has been more about just emotional balance. Mm -hmm. I feel like. Um, and feeling safe to talk about her feelings. Right. Because that was, that was something we had to like drill into her because she never felt like she would just sit there and cry and be like, well, why are you crying? No, I'm not. Okay, but you are. Yeah. <laughs> silent, like, silent tears. Silent tears. And I'm like, talk, child. And so eventually, like, we really just had to keep pushing her and pushing her and pushing her. Like, Cameron, you, we don't know what's wrong. And so eventually, she felt safe to talk to us and she felt comfortable to talk to us. And then she could see that by sharing and opening up to us, we could have dialogues and better understandings. And so... I think now we're in a place that when we do start to have those conversations, it's going to be a conversation and not us just telling her, like, this is what you need to know. This is what you need to think. Yeah. Yeah, she's, she's, she's definitely going to have an opinion. She's definitely mm -hmm. going to have some facts. She's going to have some perspective from the news, from grandparents and all of that stuff. So mm -hmm. she, she's going to come with it when it is time. Right. Uh, even if she doesn't bring it to us. How about mm -hmm. that? She may bring it to us one day. So. Mm -hmm. Ten years from now, where do you guys see what's your, like, proudest accomplishment for Cameron? So that she'll be twenty three. Oh man! So Cameron will probably be in a graduate school program. Okay. Yeah, like I think she'll do. What if she just wants to get that bachelor's and make that money? What money? Hmm. <laughs> by then, by then, oh. yeah. Um, the robots. No, yeah, I really, taking everything. I, I think I really feel that. I mean, just knowing who Cameron is mm -hmm. and like the goals that she has, and just constantly wanting to. I've never known a thirteen year old want to go to a museum so bad. Like. Mm -hmm. And learn. I mean, that's a good thing. But I, I mean, so I can see at 23, Cameron still going to school, learning, constantly mm -hmm. striving to grow and pick up new skills. And I think she's going to be an amazing adult and incredibly successful person. At 23, I want her to be able to identify um, character and value in people. Um, I, I want her to be able to understand why you know that she has a purpose and that she's not a part of anyone else's plan wherever that is if she's try and she's Cameron has a lot of different exposure to a lot of different experiences mm -hmm. uh, my two sisters went to Norfolk State on engineering scholarships she's been exposed to that Jessica has cousins who went to uh, Howard on scholarships and we got two of her cousins are on scholarships at Harvard or something crazy like mm -hmm. that and one of her cousins is about to go to Spain. So she's been exposed to... And she has two grandparents two, with PhDs in yeah, psychology. And, you know, and a, my father's a college a lawyer. Yeah, her mm -hmm. mother and her mother has a master's oh, degree. She's mm -hmm. surrounded by so, excellence. So she, yeah. yeah, so that's what, uh, it would, that would be the best thing that I could say. So wherever she is, um, I'm just, I just want her understanding value in herself mm. and character in herself and being able to identify those traits in other people and who she attaches herself with and missions she attaches herself to. So no matter where it is, whether it's in um, overseas or Peace Corps, whether it's in the military, the college, a graduate program, in the community, you know, helping people, just be able to recognize value in yourself and in other people and who you are. 
it's it's very interesting because and this might take us down a sidebar <laughs> Hope not too far, but it's just very interesting to hear you guys talk about all of the educational greatness mm -hmm. that's around this child. She could almost like, and, and not necessarily in a bad way, take it for granted, but just the fact that she assumes that she'll go to college and assumes that she'll go to grad school and all that. That's a good thing, mm -hmm. especially amongst like the black community where you like, there's some students, there's some kids, even like the kids that I'm involved in ministry at church with or in the community where you tell them they can go to college. They're like, wait, what? That's not even a possibility. Right. But for her, it's like a foregone conclusion. And being able to grow up like that, mm -hmm. I think does wonders for a child's psyche. Yeah. yeah. Her, her life has been like one big, a different world Cosby show. Yeah. In certain facets. Minus Bill Cosby. Yeah. Minus Bill Cosby, Way yeah, the, the, the good Bill Cosby, Way. yeah, the good, the, the dad is great, gave yeah. him chocolate cake, Bill Cosby, yeah, that, that guy, that guy, yeah. the character, the character, yeah, yeah. Huxtable, Cliff Huxtable, Huxtable. Yeah. Cliff, Cliff Huxtable. Huxtable, yes, yeah, it's been a, so it's been it's been a great experience when it comes to that, and so like you said, she's just been surrounded by you know great examples and positive mm -hmm. examples, so I, I hope you know she can look back in 10 years and say yeah I had to get here because yeah. this is what the standard was absolutely and I didn't have I didn't have an option to to be below that standard and not even see it as like a standard of like oh you have to do it but like why wouldn't I like, absolutely that's just what we do yeah. like for me it was like well of course I'm going to college like, <laughs> like what do you do after like, high that's school that's just implied like <laughs> yeah. that's, that's what you do and, and so I think Cameron is now saying like that's just what we do like yeah. that's who we are we, we go to college it's not like oh I have to go no that's just what we do excellent mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, so um, let's talk a little bit about, and uh, we're, we're wrapping up now, but talk a little bit about each other and how your relationship with each other has, has changed since becoming co-parents. And I guess it's been, for you guys, it, it's been a longer road than, uh, than most, so it wasn't something that happened overnight. Mm -hmm. um, but talk about your views of each other, like what you've come to appreciate about Juan and what you've come to appreciate about Jessica when it comes to uh, seeing them parent. <sighs> You go ahead. <laughs> um, she's relentless. So. <laughs> In a good way. <laughs> she's relentless. So when I say she's relentless, it means that, okay, Cameron, you know what's expected of you. Let's do it. Cameron, this is, ex let's do it. And. For me to recognize that in her is okay, you are really invested. And it started with her being relentless on me as a parent, as a distant parent away from, you know, Cameron. Um, at times it did get, you know, difficult to, you know, to, to keep up with her and to deal with some communication issues, you know, between, you know, her mom and myself. So it it's been how how can I put this? It's been great to have her as a support and a motive because she's been relentless with me in, in terms of becoming a better parent as well. Um, always pushing me to go to a different level of parenting, and I really appreciate that. Um, always, pick, you know, pushing me to get to a, excuse me, another level of awareness, just in that I have a, a little girl and that I have to, you know, be mindful of how I, you know, how I present myself and. Um, the things that I'm reinforcing for her, even as a dad. Um, so I, I won't continue to say relentless because I don't want to sound um, relentless. You, Naggy. Yeah, I don't want to sound like she. I don't want. I don't want to be that. But it, you know, it, relentless is relentless. Uh, good things and bad things. Um, she's very supportive. Uh, when she talked about Cameron and her round belly and her cheeks, you know, she was very, very supportive at that time. And it, it also showed me that she was having some challenges. Um, with understanding that she was going to have to connect with me on that level of co-parenting. Mm -hmm. So when she communicated those challenges with me, I was like, oh, that's what it is. I'm just expecting you to come in and just pick up the ball because you see what I'm doing. But mm -hmm. you need to connect with the issues as well. You need to figure out where your place is going to be. You need to invest. And once that happened, once that happened, once that switch was flipped, it's, it's been all money. You know, she's, she's been money and clutch in every kind of way you want to talk about it. Um, you know, I don't have to worry about, um, I don't have to worry about Cameron not being able to come to her when I'm not there. If there's something, I always tell Cameron, you know, if, if I'm going away for a weekend or something like that, if I'm going, went on a fellas trip before we got married, I'm like, hey, look, you need something, call Jessica. I'm not going to be around. And, you know, I'm, I'm happy with that. I'm very happy with that. So I'll let her talk for 10 minutes about me now. <laughs> 
<laughs> or, were you keeping count? <laughs> <laughs> I was keeping count how many times I said relentless. Mm. Um, mm. No, and so that's gonna come up again. With uh, with Jawan, it's being extremely patient and accepting of me. Being patient in the sense of it took us a long time to get to where we are now, and understanding that I needed to figure out who I was going to be to Cameron and also accepting and being patient of me accepting that I have to share Cameron with him because mm -hmm. there was definitely a time where I didn't want like when we were living apart I didn't want to share my weekends with Juwan with this six-year-old like why do you have to be here I wanted to spend time with him and so it was having to work through that and having to figure out like how can we get this to work and he was patient throughout all of that because he could have easily been like listen if you can't like love her and love me at the same time then this is it this is done but he stayed by me and was like okay and we'd come up with a plan we'd lay out our schedules we'd have to figure things out but just being patient with allowing me to figure out where i fit in all of this and also being accepting of i wasn't going to come in and, and bulldoze through even though i was relentless but not coming in and just instilling my values and morals from how i was raised and just disregarding his and being able to communicate with me and come up with some type of compromise of how we can parent together and still bring in what was important to him as a child and what was important to me as a child. So I definitely think patience and acceptance were key things in us being able to get to where we are now when it comes to parenting Cameron. Excellent. Yeah. You, you um, I don't know if it was AJ and Tia you were talking to and um, you were talking about the- Shout out to AJ and Tia. Shout out to AJ and Shout Tia. Shout out to AJ and Tia. Um, they were talking about the dynamics of their grandparents being younger. Mm -hmm. like they had younger grandparents. Mm -hmm. Jessica and I come from two different sides of the track, so to speak. My parents were very young when they had me, and uh, you know Jessica's parents are you know a little older than my parents. So with with understanding of how she was raised and how I was raised, like I said before, young parents. I always I had my you know my my dad was married maybe in 1990. Um, and my mother married maybe a year later or if not the same year so I always had that um, those out those the step parents so to speak so when Jessica and I began dating I expected her to come right in and be the step parent that I was used to having all of my life people mm -hmm. that came in and you know were there you know doing those things so when she and I started dating it took me a while to recognize, oh, that's the issue. And I don't mm -hmm. remember who I spoke to that told me that was the issue that you're having, which probably made me be that patient. Mm -hmm. um, but once, like I said, once that wall was broken down and once that switch was flipped, it's been, she's just been there. She's been the lieutenant in driving everything through. Um, and we probably wouldn't be where we are if she didn't go through that because that really gave her some time to invest in Cameron. Mm -hmm. It gave her some time to find where her niche was going to be. Mm -hmm. It gave Cameron, you know, the space to identify those boundaries and where, you know, she was going to connect. Um, so I'm very thankful of, for the differences between how we were raised. And even though it initially it put some challenges up in terms of our relationship and how, we were, how I was parenting and expecting her to come in as co-parent with me, she was like, no. This has got to be your show, buddy. Mm -hmm. But let me figure out where I'm going to be. And once she figured that out, it's you know it's been great ever since. Final thoughts. Anything you guys want to say to wrap it all up? Teach your kids about internet safety. At, <laughs> even at a young age, it's incredibly important. Yes. That's my professional plug. So. <laughs> Kim, you, you, you brought up a topic talking about the racial you know mm -hmm. the racial things within you know the society and some of the things that we're going through i think that has taken you think that's taken one a to just internet safety and making sure that you don't put out new pictures right now i mean and that's when i talked about how we're, we're kind of layering this thing is that the immediate threat to us is Cameron sending new photos to somebody. It is. Like, like that's our that's my that's, number one that's, fear. It's not that's it. like her trying drugs or running away. Like it's But that stuff throwing, is still there. I mean, it out. I mean yeah, it's still running. there, I but mean, like drugs you can fix. You can go catch them and they run away. Yeah. Once some nudes are out, once it's gone. You can't put them back in. <laughs> I told her I was like, once you show never mind, I'm stop. So, yeah. Let them have it, man. You know well I was gonna say, like, once you put a picture of your vagina out there, then everyone's got your vagina. Can't take it back. 
He just said it. He <laughs> said it, but you, you followed exactly it up. And that's exactly what I told her. Once everyone's got your boobs, yeah. get it back. That's, the worst part about it is, too, is that, and I think I talk about this a lot of people, especially us that grew up, that were born in the 80s, is that when we were kids, all of our mistakes were not taped. Exactly. Like, there's nothing exactly. that was screen capped, yeah, anything like that. There's stuff that I did, like, as a child or as a younger uh, a teenager that... No one will ever remember. Someone will tell a story. I'd be like, you're a liar. Right. It's dead. It's That's dead. not true. It yeah. didn't happen. <laughs> now it's like, I know you did it. Here's the video. Yep. Here's a screen chapter. Here's a mm-hmm. Snapchat. Here's a text conversation. Yep. And it's trending on BuzzFeed right, right. now. <laughs> Look at those hashtags. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you or know? a hashtag. Yeah. Right. Like, you literally got to change your identity. Like, right. think about even the people that, the stuff that's not necessarily harmful, like the memes. Like, they have those little baby memes where they'll be, like, a baby picture and it will just be hundreds of memes. That baby's got to grow up sometimes. Right. He doesn't want to be known as meme baby. Right. <laughs> meme baby. You know? Unless you that baby with, like, a thumbs up. I mean, yeah, even that. <laughs> Doing this. Stick it, Friday. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Inter- inter- internet safety is our. Um, mm-hmm. That's that's our that's thing. Our number yeah. one thing. Like that's like every yeah. other week we're yeah. talking about that. Well, she has a phone now too, right? She had, she How had, long yeah. has she had a phone? Oh my god. Um, years. Yeah. Whew. When she got that phone, I was like, okay, so we're gonna talk about pictures. Yeah. yeah. And we're gonna talk about how we don't talk to people that we don't know. How? Okay. So, what was your justification for letting her have it at ten? And I'm, I'm asking this, actually, this is nothing new with my viewers, because I've always said I'm never going to let them have a phone until they get to, to high school, because what do you need a phone for? Well, so it, <laughs> we, we got her the phone because it's easier to get her to answer the phone than sometimes it was to get mom to answer the phone and then uh, give it to Cameron. Okay, okay. So. Mm, it just got real. Yeah. I mean, but I mean, that, that's, that's, <laughs> I think a lot of people can relate to that. I think a lot of people who are in our situation, whether mm. you're the, the mother who's mm. separated or you're the father or you're the stepmom or mm. the stepdad, you can relate to, it's incredibly hard trying mm. to speak to a child who doesn't live with you, who maybe mm. for, is yeah. further away mm. and calling the person that you may not always get along with mm. to be like, hey, can I talk to the kid? Click or ignore or mm. all of a sudden my yeah. phone doesn't work. So it's easier to give her the phone, and it allows us to see what she's doing. Because mm. with my job, I'm also heavily paranoid, and I go through everything, and I go through her phone, and I see what she's doing. And so it's helpful to have that phone and for it to be on our account because I know everything. Yeah, and, and it was... It's not <laughs> <laughs> a little bit at the end. Yeah. <laughs> it, it was also good for her to be able to have that, you know, with her with her mom, too, I imagine. It made things convenient yep. for her yeah. mother, too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Not to say that her mother wasn't mindful of that mm. or wasn't wasn't a priority for her, but mm. um, it was definitely for us on our end. Mm. Like, hey, look, just so when we want to reach you and figure out where you are and what you got mm-hmm. going on, you're at the age now where you can pick up a phone, you mm. can manipulate a cell phone, let's do it. It wasn't like she was six because, yeah. I mean, we there's, there's always going to be those communication issues when you're outside mm-hmm. of the house, just like you said. Mm-hmm. But when she got to a point where okay, you can you know, you can manipulate a cell phone, mm-hmm. you you know, you got grandparents to call and say happy birthday to mm-hmm. uh, you never know what's gonna happen. Yeah. Right. Um and I think that was also when she had started going to middle school. Was that sixth grade or was it fifth grade? I can't remember. I don't know. I wanna say it was fifth grade. But it also taught her responsibility. Mm-hmm. That's a good thing too. You know, like don't break your too. phone, don't lose your phone. Has she broken her phone? Uh, I think she no. put a passcode on it and she forgot. Like she literally put the passcode on. And was like I forgot. And I was like, well, girl, I can't help you. Like <laughs> lock it out, erase the whole thing, start again. Start over. Right. She, she hasn't. She hasn't broke it, but she, you know, she's her dad's child, so mm-hmm. she's left it in school. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, luckily, you know, her, her and her mom were able to retrieve it. Mm-hmm. Uh, so good luck on that. But that's been it. Uh, but we got her a case. Like, hey, look, this is it. Yeah, mm-hmm. you know, no insurance. No insurance. Mm-hmm. You might the next one. You, the next one you get, mm-hmm. either you're gonna be getting a summer job or something to pay for. It, yeah, Boost know, Mobile. Enjoy it while you got it. That's, you know, the, 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 that, it was scary. Yeah. <laughs> it was you, scary. You remember where it is? Tell them about the time. Right. Exactly. I don't know if you got time, but we were mm. inside, bar, but we yeah. were we talking about internet safety, which is our biggest threat. Mm. There was a game app or something like that. Mm. And she was playing a oh, game. The Pokemon Go. Like some yeah, Pokemon I don't know the spell, but it was like an African cat. He had yeah. a name. Oh no! It was the like was, the the um, like where you can or write something. a book or something. No. It Even wasn't. then, it was you're going by the picture. It probably wasn't him. It was probably he some was, creepy guy living in the basement. He had a Haitian name or African name or something mm-hmm. like that. And it was like a sudden, my daughter like a hate message. Started talking to him. We're like, Cameron, you don't know. She didn't respond. She didn't respond. But he sent. Thought, no, she no, he okay. sent her like a game invite, and we were like, delete the app. Like that's a game you can't play. Mm-hmm. I don't know why I have this vivid imagination of you running into the room taking the phone. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're done with this. <laughs> yeah, so it, we didn't, we didn't have to go that far, but that was the one time. Mm-hmm. But um, Jessica was talking about something where she was 
using explicit language, language when writing like oh, a, a storybook. There's an app oh, where you can like write you can write chapter books mm-hmm. and she basically wrote like, you know, a twelve year old's version of like Fifty Shades of Grey. I was get like, it. Oh no. I was no, like, don't get it. Stop it, getting it. It was it. the Stop funny it, it was the it. funniest story and I was like, Do you want your daddy to read this? And she's like, No. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't read it. But she it didn't. Was, I was like, you need to fix it. You yeah, need to fix it, the chapters. It was, it was her creative. And it was. Her and that's so, I mean, the girl's app is writing a book. Yeah. Like, that's yeah, true. First world I mean, problem. Yeah, yeah. No, that's not even like a first world problem. Like, that's no, amazing. That's like, like, a, that's her like app a good. It's a, it's a better problem to yeah. have than others. Right, exactly. Right. Yeah. <laughs> it's a better I mean, problem to have than others. Adult yeah. romance is great and all, yeah. but like, we don't need to start like 12. You're like, let's, yeah. let's wait. Like, yeah. Get a little bit older. But. I mean, yeah, the app was a writing a book app versus mm. like Man. Snapchat and Instagram, which is not allowed yeah. to have because they shouldn't need to. I mean, it's, she's pretty intelligent streams. to get in trouble with the writing a book app as exactly. opposed to Snapchat. Exactly. Because Snapchat's way about, easier to get in trouble exactly. on. Exactly. She had to get creative to she get in did. trouble. She had to write it out. She yeah. write chapters of it. Yeah. yeah. That's pretty yeah. impressive. Not just one picture. Just magic paper. Right? Yeah, that's for real. Like, you already wrote it. Just yeah. turn that in. Right. Yeah, I'm good to go. <laughs> yeah. Shout out to English 200. Right. I took it eight times. Yeah. How many of y'all have dropped out because of English 200? Yeah. Nah, they tell you, 20 page, what? Nah, I got to go. No, I'm not interested. No, <laughs> yeah, how many? Nah, I'm good. Jay Sarge never sounded so good. <laughs> I know, right? They don't have English 200 there, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah let's go there. Yeah. I can see my friends at the comments. Yeah. Yeah. I'll meet y'all under the horns. Right. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think that was my last. You gave your last shot. We yeah. had like five different last thoughts, but it's all good. Yeah, man. We, we could go on for final thoughts for days. Yeah, so. we could. Yeah, especially about internet safety. Yeah, yeah. Thank y'all so much for allowing me to come in. You guys yeah. have a beautiful home, Thank beautiful you. relationship. Thank it's you. good to see it firsthand. That's one thing I can say is doing this show, seeing relationships like firsthand mm-hmm. is like totally different from seeing like pictures. You know what I mean? Yeah. So the, and we were talking a little bit about that before we started filming. Was that? Like seeing it firsthand really matters. So I really appreciate you guys coming on and talking to me. And I appreciate everybody for watching. Uh, once again, this is the parenting series. We have one episode left in the parenting series with the special surprise guest next week, our final guest in the parenting series. And you're smiling like that because I know you know who the guest is. Don't say anything. I'm excited. So make sure you guys tune in next week. <laughs> make sure you, you tune in on uh, next week, 8.45 Tuesday. Actually, it might be Thursday. We'll know for sure on Monday. So tune in. Again, this has been another exciting episode of 10 Minutes with Ronald, the show that nobody asked for, yet someone is watching. You guys have to keep looking at the camera until I turn it off. Got it. This is good. Yeah, just look at Not with your eyes like that, though. Don't look scary.